Beekeepers, Aaron King, Treasurer of Tidewater Beekeepers Association here. Just wanted to give you a few announcements for the next coming month. The first thing we're going to do is to try to have a in-person meeting at Town Bank. Uh, the only thing that we have to worry about again is whether or not Town Bank is going to approve us to go in. So keep an eye on the website and keep an eye on the post. We will send out an email announcement if we have it in person. If we do not have it in person, we will have another virtual meeting. And again, uh, it's just fluid right now, so pay attention to the website. The other thing I wanted to let you guys know is we are putting together a basket for Town Bank. Uh, so that uh, we do this once a year. So if you have anything you'd like to donate to that gift basket, it's just, uh, you know, honey, uh, wax products, those kind of things. We fill it up. We give it over to them for them giving us the room for free every year. So uh, if you have anything you'd like to donate, just uh, get in contact with uh, Haji uh, or myself, and we will try to uh, uh, arrange a time to pick up. If you have any questions, again, you can ask in the chat. Uh, this will be a pre-recorded live stream, so we will be just we will be streaming. Um, a, we will be streaming a video live that was pre-recorded, and we will be in the chat to answer your questions. So if you have any questions, ask them in the chat. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Bird, Vice President of Tidewater Beekeepers Association, and today we're going to talk about mite treatments. I myself. We're going to be talking about oxalic acid. All right, so we're going to do some training today on oxalic acid um, and uh, mite treatments in general. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit of the oxalic acid. Um, there'll probably be a lot of questions about it, and we'll answer that uh, when this goes live. Um, but a lot of people want to know is oxalic acid organic it is an organic compound um, and I don't know if it's actually considered an organic treatment but it is an organic compound um, there's uh, several different ways that it can be administered into a hive to kill the mites uh, the method I use is called vaporization it's when it's heated up to about 315 degrees um, it vaporizes and goes into the hive. Uh, once it starts cooling down, the crystals will coat pretty much um, the inside of the hive and the bees. The bees will end up cleaning all the oxalic out, uh, acid out of the hive. But it also it kills the mites at between 90 to 95% kill rate of the mites that are exposed to the oxalic acid. Uh, it will not kill the mites inside um, the kept um, uh, brood, but it will kill, like I said, 90 to 95 percent of the mites that are um, that are not under the cap brood. That being said, you would need to treat. Or I, I should say I treat anywhere from um, every three to five days. Uh, it is recommended that it is do it at least um, every seven days for a total of about three weeks. Um, like I said, I do it every three to five days because I want to make sure that most of the mites don't get back into the capped brood and keep multiplying. Another upside to oxalic acid is the cost of it. Um, the cost for a 10 pound bag of oxalic acid uh, it's about $30 on Amazon, and that would last the average beekeeper probably a lifetime. Um, you could probably get 10 people um, to split a 10 pound bag, and it would probably last each one of those 10 people several years. Uh, you use a quarter to a half a teaspoon per um, treatment, uh, depending on how many brood boxes you have. Uh, you do not want to treat with the honey supers on um, it is not um, it's not allowed here in the United States to um, sell honey or treat a hive with your honey supers on uh, in Europe and a lot of countries it, it is okay to do it but not here let's see uh, the times of the year you can do it pretty much any time that they are not clustered up so 
It could be 100 degrees outside, it could be 50 degrees outside, it doesn't matter as long as the bees are not clustered um, in the winter, you can treat with oxalic acid. This is the ProVap 110. Uh, there are quite a few people out there that are making these for less than half of the price of um, this particular one. Uh, we actually have a member of our club that has made one uh, himself. Uh, I believe probably around $100 you can make it yourself. Buy this one, uh, it's pretty expensive, uh, about $500. There is also uh, one that runs anywhere from 60 to 120 that's just a little dish that you slide into the front entrance. Uh, that one takes several minutes to heat up. Uh, this one takes several seconds. Let's talk about safety. What is important that you have to always don when you're using oxalic acid? Uh, you have to have a, vapor, um, a respirator. It's an acid. If you breathe it in the acid vapors, it will burn your lungs, potentially put you in the hospital. Um, and if you get it on your hands, just wash your hands when you're finished. Um, it's it's a, a crystal powder, so it probably won't burn your hands unless your hands were real moist or wet. Um, I don't use gloves particularly, but I do wash my hands when I'm done. Um, but yes, uh, I got this Harbor Freight probably $25-$30 uh, was this respirator. Uh, it works great um, and definitely need to use one. Alright, basically this is a uh, half teaspoon. Um, you would dump half teaspoon for a 5 frame nuke. For an 8 or 10 frame box you would do, which would be a whole teaspoon, and that would do um, one brood box. And you should do this um, for each brood box. You could slide it in through the front entrance or through the lid if you want, if you have a two brood boxes. Um, like I said, you know, remove your honey supers before you do this. Okay, we can see the temperature is rising it's in Celsius um, I got it set at 250 I believe it comes set at 230 degrees Celsius I upped it a little bit uh, you don't want to up it too too much I upped it a little bit so I can go from hive to hive to hive to hive and spend less time uh, waiting for it to heat back up um, but all in purposes you want to keep it where it's set at which was I believe 230 um, and it'll take a few seconds to heat up. Let me go grab my gloves because this gets extremely hot. You put this on, the cap on, and if for some reason you had dirt, debris, or leftover crystals that just didn't um, come out then it could clog this up and it would pop the cap off um, and could potentially get um, get in your eyes so it's always good to wear safety glasses the other thing uh, to make life easy on on me anyway I took a quarter inch drill and drilled a hole into the bottom of the box um, all the boxes that I have solid bottom boards, I just drilled a hole in and the bees will plug it up. So you take a golf tee and just leave a golf tee in it. And then when you're ready to put this in, pull the golf tee out and you know the hole is clear. And my golf tee broke, so I don't know if my hole is clear or not. And you would shove this in, like so. And here we go. 
Make sure you stick there. Stick it on top. Push down. Keep it upside down. Stick it in the hole. And tap. There we go. And as you can see, the vapors are coming out. It'll take this particular unit takes about 20 to 30 seconds at most before it passes. And tension it down. And once it starts climbing back up, it's usually finished. My name is Haji Hogerson, president of Tidewater Beekeepers Association, and I'm going to be talking to you about uh, one of your treatment options when it comes to treating for Varroa mite and figuring out if you need to treat. That's another lecture, another subject, but one of your options is formic acid. Formic acid is actually uh, considered a soft treatment. Um, I've never had to use hard chemicals in treating for Varroa. Hopefully I never have to. But Formic is actually of all the different treatment options is personally my favorite. And the reason for that is it's the only treatment you can use while you have honey supers on all other treatments, you got to take your honey supers off, not formic acid because it's a fumigant. And it's the only treatment that attacks the mite and kills it while it's in the cell. As you know, Varroa mites, uh, their reproductive cycle mirrors that of the honeybee and they reproduce in the cell with the pupa and the larva. And this uh, chemicals do not penetrate that cocoon. But, but formic acid fumes do. It is a fumigant. It's not a contact um, type of treatment. So that's why it works. And if you, you don't have to break the brood cycle because they're attacking, the, the treatment is attacking the mite in the cell. Um, so the only drawback is temperature is an issue, okay? Um, the directions are um, 50 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. You might still see some directions out there that say 50 to 92, 
degrees Fahrenheit. If you see that, disregard those directions. They're old and obsolete. But that was the directions when this first came out. Formic acid used to be applied uh, differently than it is now in the form of Midaway quick strips. Okay, Midaway quick strips. Most of the the pad is a gel. It's organic. After the treatment's done, they tell you you don't even have to remove it because the bees will remove it. Uh, I'm telling you, remove it. You can throw it in your compost bin or in the trash or whatever. It's completely inert after that. The gel that the formic acid is in is just a way to deliver the acid on a time-release basis. The other reason I like formic acid or Midaway Quick Strip as a treatment, it's a one-week treatment. Now, it's only a fumigant, it's only fumigating for three days. The reason it's considered a seven-day treatment is because they don't want you getting into the hive and disturbing it before it gets back to normal because this will stress the bees just like any treatment okay in one way or another treatments are going to disrupt the colony the queen probably will stop laying but after four or five days she's back to laying and everything is back to normal again so they don't want you getting into the colony removing the strips and all that stuff until everything's back to normal otherwise you you might cause the colony to do something that you don't want them to do like kill your queen okay there has been reports of brood kill and queen kill um, mostly that is when the temperature parameters and the directions were a lot higher I've never had a queen kill there is gonna be some brood kill these pads they come two to a packet it takes one packet to treat a colony. If you're doing a nuke, I only use one of the two pads. So again, there's two pads in here and they're sealed in plastic because it is a fume and it, it's, it'll kind of knock your head back, okay? Um, because it's an acid, you wanna wear gloves, you don't, have to wear a respirator but you might want to if you're real sensitive to the biggest thing just don't stick your your head right down in the bucket and take a big whiff <laughs> because it will if you've ever done that with a bucket of ammonia well this will this will trump ammonia okay but that's how it works all right so there's a little line right here and you're supposed to cut it I usually cut this end off and possibly that end and you don't have to cut right on the line but you want to slip this in there and kind of lift the plastic up away from the gel pad and then make your cut and just peel everything open because you can get to it if it's if you're not trying to shake it out of out of the end so uh, the two gel pads are wrapped in wax paper okay do not remove the wax paper or you will kill your queen and a whole lot of your bees the wax paper is is what contains the gel and the formic acid and and um, gives it a delivery system that's time released and controlled if you take the gel wrapping off there's no control and they will get a blast and you will kill your queen at a minimum okay remember that so um, it takes one for a, a colony you need to have at least five frames of brood before you use this okay it can't be a little two or three frames of brood and a little starter uh, nuke but some nukes are double deep or triple mediums or whatever and there's plenty of brood in there and but with a nuke there is going to be um, um, I just use one of the gel pads now um, the way that we put it on is normally most brood chambers are double deeps or triple mediums okay that configuration 
is typically what most beekeepers use. So if you're going to do that, you would want to um, separate the two deep boxes or if there's triple three mediums, uh, put this on the top bars of the bottom box, okay? In between the two deeps or in between brood box one and brood box two if you're using mediums, okay? So I'm gonna show you how these are placed on the frames um, I'm not going to take them out of the wrapper, so I'm going to use two of these to kind of simulate the two pads. But just keep in mind, uh, there are two pads in this package, and that's all you need for one treatment of, of one colony. So, um, you want to put them... You want to put them in in this manner of course the wrapper is not going to be on there all right it's important that you engage every slot with the might away quick strip across here now of course in the middle these slots are getting kind of a double whammy but you don't want to have it over here because then there's no formic acid or very little formic acid getting in over here. So make sure you bring it all the way to the side and all the way to this side. And of course the middle is where typically most of the brood is. So you really want that brood to get the double whammy. All right. And you put them in like that. When you do that, the bees are going to buzz and move away because they, they don't like that smell either, but it will They'll, they'll move away. Try not to just put it down and squish your bees. Just try to put it down slowly and they'll move away, okay? You want to remove the entrance. The entrance reducer needs to be completely removed and you want to put your plastic board in the bottom. You know, the thing that came for counting your mites, the corrugated plastic put that in the bottom completely all right and then you want to make sure they're ventilated and they've got good ventilation from the top and that's it you put them in there it will also formic acid uh, might away quick strip will also do a number on your hive beetles it might not kill all of them but they don't like it it's going to kill some of them but it's also going to drive the small hive beetles out of your hive and you'll know that when you go to pull that sticky board out. And before you put the board in there, I usually spray it with Pam because I'm I want to know what my might load or my might drop is during this treatment. But a lot of times when I pull that board out uh, at the end of the treatment, or even after three days or four days, you can pull it out because it's no longer fumigating. Sometimes you'll find a cluster of a hundred hive beetles down there because they're just trying to get some fresh air until this beekeeper uh, removes this nasty stuff that they don't like. Okay, so it's kind of a two-part thing. It'll it's designed for varroa, but it'll also do a number on um, the small hive beetles. Okay, so honey and the honey production. Formic acid is naturally occurring. People think, oh, well, this is acid and isn't that bad. No, formic acid is naturally occurring in the production of honey at a higher concentration than what they're getting with this treatment. However, that's up in the honey supers. We want the concentration down in the brood chamber, okay? Because my first question when I heard that is, well, why do we even have to treat that? why can't we just let them produce honey and that kills all the mites and we all know that that doesn't kill all the mites that's because that high concentration is up in the supers and not down in the brood chamber where we want it so um, it's very important that um, the directions will tell you not to feed your bees I questioned them I called the company and I questioned them on that I said, what's the difference in them foraging and bringing back nectar and feeding? 
and they said, well, we just don't want you to get into the colony and disturb them. But if you have a feeding device that, that you use that does not require you to get into the colony and dis, disrupt them, then do that. If it's a top feeder, if it's a Boardman entrance feeder, but if it's one of those frame feeders or, or something that's down in, you definitely don't want to do that. That's what they mean by do not feed during this treatment. Okay, I had to get them to explain that because it didn't make sense to me. All right, so that's what they mean. And um, uh, you don't want to leave these pads in there. They will remove some of them and chew it and stuff like that, but it'll eventually get hard and and it becomes a safe haven for high beetles after the, the fumes are all gone. And you don't want to create a safe haven for high beetles because then you're not a friend of your bees. All right, so get back in there after the seven days, remove the gel pads, throw them in the trash. They, they don't even hardly have any smell to them anymore. Um, and then, of course, you also post treatment, you want to do another mite load assessment to see the efficacy of your treatment, see how effective it was, because you might have to treat again. Normally that doesn't happen with, with formic acid, but you might have to treat again, and you always want to do a pre-mite load assessment, pre-treatment mite load assessment, and a post-treatment to see how effective you were with your treatment.